What's up, modern drummer? I'm Cavs. We're here at Red Rocks. I'm gonna show you some stuff. Let's go. This is my kit I use in America. This kit just stays here in America, made by CNC, and they're amazing. Whatever I need, they'll just build it for me. Hardworking, like really small company, based out of uh, Kansas City. These are 20 by 14s, uh, both, the, both the exact same size. I use, I use 20s. You know, it's like not very common to sort of use 20 inch kick drums. You know, I like to have them like pretty sort of dead sounding, like sort of really 70s. You can make them, you can make them super boomy as well. And um, I also like to, um, I like to have everything set really low. So I like to sit over like my rack tom. So having the shorter, having the, having the 20 inch means I can have my tom lower and like that kind of stuff. I got these little furry animals in here that are, um, I don't know, I thought it was a bit more like, uh, a bit more colorful than just having like blankets or pillows in there. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'll probably give them to my daughter at the end of the tour. Um, but yeah, that's the reason for the stuffed animals. So we'll go to the rack. That's just a, um, it's just a 13 by nine. Um, yeah, as I said before, it's, I like to have it sitting really low and that's, that's what's so good about having the 20 inch um, kick drums. And um, yeah, so these are my uh, bongo concert toms. Uh, I got an eight and a 10. Um, yeah, I guess like I, I, I used to have these um, here underneath these three roto toms. I used to have them set up there um, just as part of my like sort of percussion stuff that I do in like the breakdowns of like songs and like you do all the polyrhythms on them. But, um, but recently with the, with the new album with Petro that's coming out, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of the, you know, like, you know, those fills. So I wanted to add, um, I wanted to just add like a, you know, a bit more of a range. Yeah. That's why I have them set up here now. And it's kind of, it's kind of cool having them over the top of the hi-hats. I've been really enjoying it. I, I use them a lot more than when they used to be here. Anyway, yeah, this is, yeah, this is a 13 by nine, um, 16 by 16 floor tom, just, just standard. This is a remake of the, um, 60s jazz fest, uh, snares, but, um, I mean, I, I, I used to use the uh, 60s Acrylite for, for years and, um, and I still do in the studio a lot, but this is like, uh, I, I just like touring with like a sort of like a brand new snare cause it's more of like a workhorse, um, you know, it's just more likely for something to go wrong, but they've built these, um, they've built these, uh, remakes like so well, they they've, they've got the dampener on them and, um, and yeah, it's got the like, um, oh, I don't know if I'm take this off, but it's, yeah, it's got the like white, white painted, um, inside kind of thing, which is cool. What they did in the sixties, how the painted the, uh, wood white. I just use a, um, vintage A just like nice and thin. Um, and again, just like really versatile, the, the vintage A. Um, and I got this little dampener here. You guys have probably seen these like M80 snare weight things. Um, these are cool. I've, I've just always got this on my, it has a little magnet there so you can just flick it off if you need to, which is sick. Or you can do this, which I don't usually do, but you know, um, but yeah, these, these, these things are really cool. I love these, but I always have the, the dampen on the inside, like fully on as well. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I use dream, all my symbols are dream. Um, I don't know. A lot of people probably know about dream, but they're like a smaller symbol company based out of, um, Toronto. I've been using them for years. Like, I think, I think like before it was like 2016, one of our earlier U S tours, I, you know, I had like a Zildjian K and I had it for years and it was before I had like money or anything. And so, um, and that, and that symbol cracked and I just used it for like cracked for another, like, you know, couple of years and it got so cracked and it was like, got past to the, the point where it was like cool cracked, you know? So I, um, I went to a local drum shop in New York. I think it was like main drag or something in New York. And, um, I was just looking at symbols and, um, I come across the dream energy. And, um, yeah, this was like in like 2016 or something. And, um, and it was like half the price of everything else. And it was just, and it was like, I guess that was like the main sort of draw card that it was so cheap, you know, back, back in, 
um, back in those days. We didn't didn't really have another, a, a lot of money, and I just I just needed a new ride. So I got that, and then um, I just loved it. I just was I just became attached to it, and um, but I only had that ride. Everything else I had was just like all different stuff. And then uh, since then, I um, you know I kept buying all these dream symbols because I love them. And then um, yeah, I think the dream guys found out that I used that I used their symbols, and then yeah, they just offered them up. Yeah. So um, and those those guys are amazing. Again, it's like a small company from. Um, uh, from Toronto, and um, yeah, the, the, it's, it's the same with CNC drums. Like I just, I just love using all the sort of like smaller brands and like just rep, repping those guys. You know, it's really good. But uh, this, this one here is um, the Eclipse uh, Twenty One Ride. This is the first tour I've used this. Actually, I used to have. Um, this is a Twenty One Inch. This is a Twenty Two. I used to have two. I used to have two Twenty Two. I used to have a Twenty Two Crash uh, Crash Ride as well as a as another crash so like a big one but yeah this is a 21 and it's got the like dark matter sort of inlay which is like it's kind of like it's almost like halfway between crash and 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 a china you know so uh it's like it's it's pretty trashy but um yeah but i also crash on this um but yeah as i said it's like yeah it's got that kind of like trashiness but also symbol like you know between Crash and a China. Yeah, it's cool. And then, uh, yeah, the the 15 inch Dream Energy hats. Again, uh, like this is the same series as the ride. These are just like, um, yeah, I mean, these are just, these are just pretty standard, but they're, again, they're just like workhorses. Nothing ever goes wrong with them. They, they, they just always sound good. Yeah, that's those. And then China. Yeah, this is a 22. I um I used to use a 18 China on the last tour, and um and it was really good. But I wanted a bit more like I wanted a bit more sustain with the China. Um, so I got a well, I got Dream to send me a 22 and a 24, and like the 24 was like so big but so sick. You know, 24 China is like like this big, and I I do really. I, I use that, you know, back home in the studio. It's really, really cool. But I think it was a bit too much um, to tour with. So yeah, I went the 22 and like, even this one's just like, is, is really big, but yeah, just has that little bit more sustain um, that I wanted, so. Um, yeah, another thing about the, the ride that I use it's because um, I know you're hearing like heaps of Giz songs. I'm always like using the bell um, for a lot of things. And um, this energy just has like a really, really good, it's like the dark matter um, bell. Um, so yeah, it's super crispy and, su and the, bell, the bell is super crispy and super bright. So I really like that when I'm doing all the bell stuff. Like, you know, that kind of thing. These are the Rotos. Um, yeah, as I was, as I was saying before, the um, I used to have my um, the bongo toms here, and um, yeah, and then the three up top. So this is just the six, eight, ten, and then I recently just added the twelve and fourteen, and um, it's really good. I wanted a sixteen as well. I don't think Remo make a sixteen anymore. I tried to find one, but you can get vintage ones, which which I probably will at some point, you know. Um, but yeah, these are cool, and we. Um, we have, yeah, we have like heaps of fun with these, like um, when we do like sort of like improvised like percussion breakdown things in some of the songs, um, Stu will often come up because I can't really tune them as I'm playing. So, you know, I'll, I'll be playing them, Stu, Stu will come up and pitch them to the key, um, which which is really good. And you can really notice when like like tuned percussion, it's like it's when it's tuned to the, you know, to the pitch of the song, it's, it's, it's really, really cool. Um, but we don't do that that often. A lot of the time, I just kind of just like get them to sound good and yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that. Yeah, you can kind of drive it like a bus, especially this big one, you know? Fun.
And what's next? The gong. Yeah, again, this is a dream. It's a dream gong. Every drummer kind of wants a gong at some point. Yeah, dream, dream gave me one and it was like, so happy. <laughs> and um, I mean, a lot of it, I, I, I do play it a lot, but it also just like looks cool, you know, it's the gong, you know? Yeah, so I got the 40 inch. The 40 inch is kind of like a good size where it's like, it's big, but it's not it's not too big to that it's not it's not that big that you can't like you know tour with it <laughs> anything bigger i think would be pretty pretty annoying but um i don't know who knows maybe i'll get a bigger one at some point but um you need two. sorry you need two. yeah i know yeah i definitely want to get two i have three so i have another one at home this size but it's a um it's a feng gong so that's like a wind more of a wind sound and then i have a and then i have a 24 inch um, chow, which is the same as this. This is a chow gong. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I have one at home that's a 24 inch and that's got a like, it's, um, yeah, that's like got a tone. I can't remember what it's like, the, the pitch, but we, when, when we record it, we, you know, we, we record the, we record it um, solo and then, you know, we can pitch it up and down and pitch it to the track. So the gong just sounds like the same note as the, as the songs, which is, which is really cool. But, um, yeah, but these 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 chow gongs are more of like a deeper sound. As I said, my other one at home is more of a wind kind of thing. But um, yeah, this one's cool. That's a gong. <laughs> yeah, so these are the pedals. Nothing, nothing really, nothing really interesting going on down here. Apart from this, we should probably move that over there. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're just DW five thousands. I um, yeah, they 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 they're really good. They're just really solid, really reliable. These pedals. Um, yeah, my my little setup here, which is like everyone kind of like is a bit confused with but i um because you can get the two stand um the the two legged stands and um i just don't really like those they're just not really stable but yeah so i just have it like i just yeah i just have it like that and it's like it's like looks really <laughs> looks really weird but you know when i'm playing i really don't even notice that that leg being there because i'm always um you know i've always got my foot on it and, and when i'm double kicking i never go that far back anyway so Yeah, and then and yeah, and then it's really easy to sort of switch between, you know. It looks like it would be hard, but it's 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 really it's really not that bad. And I'm just used to it by now. This is new. This is the first. This is my first tour with um with the old butt kicker, and um yeah. So this is rigged up to this sub here, and um um this and then this is controlled by our uh, monitor engineer, so they can give me. Oh, I, I can do it myself, but I sort of have it set how, you know, just how it is. And it can also be, can be controlled at the desk. But basically when I hit the kick drum, I get a little kick up the ass, um, which is, I don't have, it's, it's never on that. It's just like a little, you know, but it just means that I don't have to, because when I'm, when I'm playing, I like to feel, uh, I like to feel the sub as well. But with the ears, you don't really get that. So I used to just like, you know, have a sub, and I still do just in case I need more. But, um, and, and, and the wedge as well, but I've got everything in the ears. So if I don't run these, it's less, it's less bleed. And because we record every show, um, the less bleed in the drum mics, the better. So yeah, I try not to use, I try not to use that, the, the sub and the wedge, but yeah, that's, so I got this buck kicker and I, don't know, I was always kind of like, I always kind of like a bit of, a bit like skeptic of it i just didn't 
didn't know how it would go but yeah it's 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 working really well i really like it um but yeah it's pretty comfy i guess <laughs> yeah so this is my talk back yeah no no one no one can hear me this is so i can talk to our crew um on the side so if i do need something like i just um put on this switch and be like can someone bring me a beer i just came out up there which is cool <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think they got the comms on up there, so that's funny. Um, but say it again one more time. It's my talk back. Yeah. Can someone please bring me a beer? <laughs> He's not there. <laughs> um, yeah, but my my sticks are. Um, I just use five A's, like nothing crazy. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't have like an endorsement or anything. I just, you know, I just like, yeah, I don't, I just always have used five A's. I, when I was a kid, I used five B's for a long time. And then when I started playing with gears, um, you know, with all the 16th notes that we're doing, I had to go a bit lighter. But what I do use as well, um, I have these, um, these are the AH five A's. So they're like American heritage. I don't know if you guys have seen these. But they're they're the same as a 5A, but they're made from uh, maple, so it's so it's their heaps lighter. So if I'm getting tired or something, I can swap out to these. They're exact same as a 5A, but they're like a bit lighter. The thing is, because they're made from maple, they like break easier. Whereas because the, the, these are hickory, so um, um, yeah. So that's like a little trick I do if I'm getting tired. Um, I switch to these, but yeah, mainly mainly I use these, um, and then. How many sticks do you go through in eight? Uh, I go through, I don't know, maybe, like, I usually just, just, just do one. If, but if I do switch to, if I do switch to these, um, and I'm still playing at the same, you know, velocity and like tempo and everything as I do with these, these will often break. So, um, but yeah, as I said, because they're not, not as strong as of a, of a stick and they're a lot lighter. Yeah, I usually go through one, maybe two. Depends how hard I'm going, if I'm digging in or whatever. Um, but yeah, I'd say just like one or two pairs a night. And then I usually just like give them away at the end of the show and like that kind of thing. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. But as I said, they're pretty standard. Probably like just like everyone like uses this shit. Um, what and songs would you use the sticks for? Like what, like uh, your stuff when your guys are going on like on a run? Yeah, would it, like switch to would the you, other ones? Would you grab them real quick? And um, yeah, like, um, again, it's just like kind of how I'm feeling. If I'm feeling like, um, you know, I'm going into, um, sometimes when I, like, you know, when I would just, we'd play the whole like Nonagon suite doing the 16th for so long, um, I'd, you know, I'd be, and it'd get to the Gamma Knife, like drum solo part, it'd get to that and I'd be like, oh, I can't, cause that's, you know, and often we play the songs like, like so much faster than, than the recording. So we'll get to that bit and I'm just like, oh, I'm tired. So I'll pull out these sticks and um, yeah, and I get through that little drum solo thing a bit easier. Um, yeah, that's a little, that's a little trick. Um, also at the, in the first couple of shows of the tour, cause I'm not like too, if I'm not like, if I'm not tour fit, you know, I, um, I'll play, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll start the show with, um, um, and also like say, say, say we're starting, we're starting with a song like Dripping Tap or something, uh, something that's, um, really fast. I'll, um, I'll just start with these sticks. Um, if I haven't, if I haven't, if I haven't had a chance to warm up, you know, I'll just start with the light ones. Um, but yeah. What's the hardest song to play live for you? In general, uh, out of all the songs in the existence of Kingdom, yeah. the hardest one that you're like the hardest one. Most well, challenging. some of the new ones at the moment from the new album are, are really, really hard. But um, yeah, it's definitely. Um, I mean, uh, what is it? Uh, Loyalty, the song from Polygon Dwarnland. Loyalties, we we do Inner Cell, Loyalty, and Horology. We always play them together. And um, they're really hard, just with all the polyrhythms and everything. They're um, yeah, they're they're hard, but um, but they're a bit more forgiving because they're not so fast. Um, some of the some of the hardest ones are the ones that are that are the really fast songs and like a lot of polyrhythms. So definitely uh, the new song Dragon. When we start playing that, when we're we're almost there, 
when we start playing that, that's going to be like really, really hard. Can we get a, you a know. Clip of you that? Yeah, 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 for sure. This is this is Dragon. Haven't played it live yet, but um, we will soon. <laughs> So on. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, that's kind of the the hard bit. That like sort of beat that's in eleven. You know that. Yeah, can't wait to play it live eventually. We'll do it. We're almost there. <laughs> maybe tonight. Maybe, maybe we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you always have to adapt your setup as you write yeah material. yeah so exactly it's always changing right exactly that's why like last time i did the interview with you guys yeah my setup was different and i think probably next time we do this it's going to be different again <laughs> but yeah idea. that's that's what i was saying i do have to adapt the setup to um for all the new songs um yeah and like i said like with with dragon there's just like a lot of like <laughs> You know, that kind of thing. So yeah, I had to, like I said, with the, with, with, with the like round the tom fills, I needed a bit more range. So that's why I had them here instead of over here. With the new album with like all the, all the polyrhythm stuff we've been doing, um, Ambrose sort of just, you know, gives us a, like a, like a backbeat of two and four on this little uh, stacker over here. I'll show you. Um, oh, he doesn't even have a stick. Oh yes, he does. Um, yeah, this is, this is Dream as well. I don't know, it's called a stack. And it's kind of just like a little symbol with like a mini china on top of it. Yeah. I got this for Ambrose the other day. This is like, a, this one's actually really cool. It's a, um, I got it from that Nelson drum shop in, um, in Nashville just the other day. But it's a, um, it's a drum key. Um, so you can tune your kit with it, but you can also just sit it on your lug uh, when you're not using it and then you can just like pick it back up, you know. Um, and I got him this capsicum as well. Uh, he's got a banana. He's got the maracas. These are like, he's been using these for years. These are- Are those his favorite? Yeah, I think so. Um, these are, um, yeah, these are just like super bright, super loud. Um, and his sleigh bells, you know, sleigh bells. Um, this he uses in, um, this is the one he uses in Crumbling Castle, again for the polyrhythm backbeat, you know, just that kind of thing. And then this is Rattlesnake, really. <laughs> oh, and this big thing. This actually might be his favorite, I think. A young drummer's watching this video right now. You're talking to him directly. What do you say? What advice can you give to a young drummer that wants to be you, that wants to be Cavs, that is writing all these cool parts, has a cool band, and 
man, I want to be like that. I want to play the Red Rocks one day. What do you say? Um, I would probably say just be yourself. Don't, don't, don't play the way anyone wants you to play and uh, listen to as much variety of music that you can. I mean, that's kind of how I learned just listening to just like so much different music and, um, you know, just find your, find, find yourself, you know, and whatever happens will, will happen, you know. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Modern Drummer, for having me. We're here at Red Rocks, and yeah, thank you so much. It's uh, it's it's a, it's it's an honor. Thank you.